All right, Shalom. First off, we all praise, honor, and glory unto Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai Bashem, Rakar Kadash, the honors to the apostles and the elders of GMS, salutes and honors to the elect, all the brothers across the four corners who are enduring in truth and sincerity to women and children, the confusion face who follow. So just bear with me. I'm just going to make sure that everything is good. All right. So, uh, this lesson in particular is based off of, you know, two separate conversations that I had with two two different brothers. You know, one uh, the brother you call, uh, you call him off on um, this past weekend, and uh, another with uh, the brother Isaria, you know, just just today, and um, you know, it's really through the spirit. You know, I seen that he made a video on it. And um, I had already had these precepts up uh, based off yesterday, you know, so uh, based really, uh, you know, last night I'll say I put these precepts together to do the lesson of the day. And, uh, you know, the spirit is really pushing this. So, you know, Lord is what is going to be an edifying video. Um, as you can see, it's entitled, you know, uh, I'm not sure what I'm going to title this. <laughs> I kind of had an idea, you know, just uh, bear with me here. But, uh, I mean, you see the title. And, you know, we we here for a reason. That's probably what it's entitled. You know, we are here for a reason. The Most High didn't bring us this far for nothing. He didn't walk with us, sup with us, bring us into this knowledge for nothing. Now, there are many that are called and few are chosen. But, you know, my heart hearts, you know, I ain't come all this way to, you know, become a castaway. Lord as well, you know, I don't become a castaway because that is a, a distinct possibility. You have, you know, men who fall off all the time. But, man, it's all about sincerity. It's all about truth and sincerity. What are your, your motives in this truth? What is your true goal? You know, ultimately, you know, the most high put the spirit on you. But on this side, the thing that we can't control, you know, you want to, as the scripture says, uh, you know, give all diligence to make your calling and election sure. So uh, this is uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 2, verse 10. It says, look at the generations of old and see that ever any trust in the Lord and was confounded. Or did any abide in his fear and was forsaken? Or whom did he ever despise that called upon him? You know, and the answer is none. You know, you can search the, the chapters, search the, the books, search the, the Old Testament, the New, the Apocrypha. Man, if you put your trust in Yahweh Bashim Yahushai, he is going to hold up his end of the bargain. So that's all we have to do. That's what we're told, what we're expected. Put forth the initiative to further this gospel. In the most high, <clears throat> it's like you, in the most high is gonna do his part when these bad times come, when these evil times, when it's martial law. When it's famine, when the MOTB comes, the hour of temptation, when the enemy comes in like a flood, he's going to do his part. He's going to be that head of protection. So he's not going to forsake, he's not going to despise anyone that truly calls upon him in truth and in sincerity. And if you are of a, a contrite heart, of a broken spirit, if you are truly apologetic for the, the sins that you have committed and you've repented, if you've gone back and you turned away and you're asking for forgiveness and you're putting your best foot forward, the Most High is going to be there for you. Okay.
Uh, moving on, this is Second Peter's chapter three, and um, let me see if I want to start up on this. <clears throat> it's like it. Bear with me. It says uh, uh, Second Peter chapter three verse nine. It says, "The Lord does not count slackness." It's like the Lord is not slack concerning His promise, as some men count slackness, but is long, but is long suffering to us, word, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And I want to, you know, just go to the NOT on this. It says the Lord is not really being slow about His promise, as some people think. No, He's being patient for your sake, right? So. We keep fucking up and fucking up and fucking up and fucking up. But the Most High is just being patient with us because he has a plan. He's given us that time that we need to put it all together, to be that, that righteous individual, to be that final form, to, you know, to go uh, ultra instinct, if you will. Because in the kingdom, that's what it's going to be. It's going to be you know, an instinct to do right. We're not going to have the 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 heart to go off or do wrong. But in this side, man, we had a build to it. it. Says he does not want anyone to be destroyed, but wants everyone to repent. So you know, the Most High is not out to get you or to get us. He wants us to succeed. He wants us to to you know have uh, that redemption arc from being you know so called niggas in the world to men of the lord and this is our opportunity what did he say he said he wants everyone to repent everyone to turn back from their wickedness from their sins and man it's just do the will Push this word. Push this gospel. Study. Spread the word. Be a brother. The concept isn't hard. I'm not saying that this is an easy walk. But the instructions are easy. We just fight in the flesh to perfect it. This is uh, St. John chapter 15, starting at uh, verse 16. It says, you have, chosen, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go forth, that's like that you should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain, that whatsoever ye shall ask, in the, ask, of, ask of the Father in my name, he may give it you. So, you know, we didn't choose to come into this thing. He chose us. Let that sink in. If you're here, you're supposed to be here. And we ain't come all this way for nothing, man. I ain't come all this way for nothing. You know, I want to be glorified in the kingdom of heaven, found righteous. You know, I don't want to feel that nuclear flame. I don't want to starve and, uh, when the famine hits. But more, more importantly, I don't want to be at odds with the Most High. I want to be a, a, a worthy servant. Verse 17, it says, These things I command you, that ye love one another. That ye love one another, man. You gotta, Like I said, you got to have that brotherly love. That charity, charity cover a multitude of sins. And we have a multitude of sins here in Babylon. So, yeah, be charitable. charitable. Don't be a, uh, a begrudging giver. All right, be happy to look at an opportunity to help a brother out when uh, they're in need. You're taking care of, you know, 
the scripture speaks about uh, offending the little ones. We are his little ones. And you, when you're helping out one of the little ones, you're helping out the most high. Not that the most high needs our help, but you understand what I'm saying. You're helping out a child of the most high. It says, if the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love his own. But because you are not of the world, but I have chosen you out the world, therefore the world hateth you. And we don't have a place in this world. There's nothing that we can go to. We became a new man. That old man that was of the world is dead. We're a new creature. So no, there's, there's nothing for me, nothing for us to go back to in the world. We see this world for what it really is. I never, I never understood how you could come into this, this beautiful gospel and then go back into the world having learned everything that we've been assured of. But hey, like I said, many are caught if you are chosen. But if you truly see and truly understand, if you see with eyes and hear with ears and you know it and you feel and you understand, you know, what the will of the Most High is, what, what the destiny of America, which is Babylon, is, then, then you would do everything that you could. You should do everything that you could to serve the Most High. And guess what? You can never go far enough. So we have to capitalize on these opportunities to be a man of the Lord. And they come at us every day. Choice after choice after choice after choice after choice after choice. That's, that's what being a, Lord, a man of the Lord is, is making the right choice <laughs> over and over and over. Because you're going to be presented two ways, two lanes, two streets. You're either going to go down the right path or the wrong one. And no, nobody's perfect. We're not going to always pick the right one. Satan has a job, and he does it well. We are in these flesh, these fleshy bodies. We're going to go off sometimes. But a righteous man, what does it say? A righteous man fall down seven times, but he get back up. Don't, don't let this, this, this road that we're on, yeah, it's, it's been a long and tedious road for a lot of us. You know, the apostles <laughs> been on this road for you know, 30 years. 30 years plus. But it, it doesn't affect them because they, they understand. Their conscience is here with a hot iron. With a, their conscience is here with a hot iron righteously. They're locked in. We got to be locked in. And, you know, whatever it is you need to do to lock in, do that. You know, whether you need to take some time to yourself. And, you know, this is one thing that me and a brother were speaking about today, you know, about uh, meditating. You know, if you need to, to take some time to yourself to, to really get your mental right, You got to pour into yourself righteously before you can pour into someone else because this, this gospel is about building yourself up and then giving it to the world. But if you're not if you're not pouring into yourself, how can you pour into someone else? If you're not feeding yourself with the scriptures, feeding yourself, you know, with, with the, the, the lessons that are being put up, Thing, doing things that are conducive to the spirit. 
If you're not pouring into yourself, how are you going to pour into others? So, yeah, take some time. Do what you got to do to mentally, spiritually, physically be right. You know, you ain't got to, you know, rum your hoi, reggae cue, or do nothing like that. But take some time, man. Take some time out to yourself and just reflect. You know, speak life into you. Really understand what's going on. Plan your 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 day out, plan out your week, whatever. Do whatever it is you need to do to be effective in this gospel. But take time to yourself to pour into yourself. The wise man come with time of leisure. So we have to use this time of leisure, you know, your free time to to build yourself up so that you are able to pour in into others. We're going to get this last scripture and we're going to end it with this. This is uh, Hebrews chapter 12, uh, starting at verse 6. It says, For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth and scourges every son whom, receive, whom he receiveth. If ye endure chastening, the Most High dealeth with you as with sons. All right, so even though it seems like you know we're going through it, that uh, this, like I said, this is a long walk or is a difficult walk. You're struggling in a certain area. Hey, man, the Most High, he he's the one that's scourging you. He's the one that's putting this this hot iron to you, your feet to the fire, so to speak. Man, if you endure this, you know he's dealing with you as he deal with the son. You know how do you, how do you discipline your child? You discipline your or why do you discipline your child? You correct them in measure for their betterment, hey, and that's what he is doing. He is correcting us in measure for our betterment. It says, uh, for what son is he whom the father chastened if not? Right? So what if you, what if you don't chasten your, your child? What if you don't put uh, some restrictions or, you know, get on your child's case, so to speak? They're going to be a wild animal. And ain't no, ain't no wild animals in this truth, man. Verse 8, it says, But if ye be without chastisement, whereof all the partakers, then ye are bastards and not sons. Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh, which corrected us, and we gave them reverence. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the Father of spirits and live? Right, you know, we have, you know, fleshly fathers, you know, the man that gave birth to you, or, you know, your mother, and we show them respect. How much more the father of spirits, man? He's the one that, that, that gave you the opportunity to come into this flesh. Uh, this is verse 10. Bear with me. Here we go. Verse 10, it says, uh, for, verily, for verily for a few days chastened us, after their own, for it's like it, for they verily, for a few days chasten us after their own pleasure, but he for our profit that we might be partakers in his holiness, right? So they raised up, they raised us up how they believe that we should uh, come up, but the Most High He is raising us up to be His servant for our profit, for our betterment. So, no, we ain't come this far to fall out. He is bringing us up the way he desires us to be for our profit, that we may be partakers in his holiness. Verse 11, now no chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous, but grievous. Right, it's not going to be a... a 
a fun thing being corrected having to hold your tongue being told you're doing this wrong you're doing that wrong no it's not a fun thing it says it's grievous it says nevertheless afterwards it yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby so when you're going through this and you're being corrected in measure you're being built up to be that that a true man of the most high that he wants you to be you you being that good fruit hey so lord's will this was edifying and I just want to give all praise, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahoshai, Bahashem, Makarkadash, the honors to the apostles and the elders of GMS, salutes and honors to the elect, all the brothers across the four corners who are enduring in truth and sincerity, the women and children, and the confusion of the faith who follow. Shalom.